I woke up, I just heard smashing of glass. I jumped up, I woke up George. It was about, must have been about 4.30 in the morning. And I said, somebody's smashed a window. And he said, how do you know? I said, I heard it. So he jumped up and I ran to the door and I locked the door. And he said, why are you locking the door? I said, why? Because I'm afraid. That's why I'm locking the door. He said, no, 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 I'm going out there. And so he ran downstairs, um, which he really didn't have to do, but he felt he had to do because my mother was upstairs and uh, he didn't want, you know, he didn't know where, how she was okay. We had a statue of St. Michael and the wing from the statue of St. Michael was made of stone, had been thrown through the window. And George was on one side and I was on the other and we looked down and this maniac just ran in like a, like a Beelzebub with a stick from St. Michael in one hand, you know, uh, the, the, you know, he, he slays the dragon with, uh, with his spear. He had that in one hand and I didn't see what he had in the other, but. Anyway, George started chanting really loud at him. And this guy was, was saying, you know, get down here, get down here. Um, you know, what do you want? He said, you know what I want. It was just horrible. It was just like this voice from the bowels of hell. And, uh, and then he just ran up the, tore up the stairs. He was in a florid psychotic state and he was tall and young and they'd come closer to where the room was, and this man was on top of George, um, uh, trying to kill him, just laying on him in just, I think, th the worst way um, to have some, you know, physical contact with some horrible person. Anyway, I just ran back in the room, and uh, I don't know, something just took over and I grabbed a um, poker. My dad was a big baseball fan and he used to always say, follow through. That's all I could think of was you're not, don't throw like a girl, follow through. I mean, it got worse, it just got worse because I hit the guy several times, you know, I could see the blood spreading down his blonde hair and then he got up, you know, he got up and he chased me and had me around the neck and then George got up and jumped on his back and poor George, he said, you know, God, just when he got off of me, I was thinking, oh, good. Then I had to get up and fight him again. And he'd already been stabbed. Uh, but we all fell into a big pile, and I managed to get out from underneath, and George pinned him down. And George said to me, I've got the knife. And I thought, what knife? You know, I didn't know. I, I thought he was just kidding. I thought he was just trying to fake the guy out, saying, I've got, I've got the knife. It's like, I, I hadn't seen that. Afterwards, we were... We were um, taken to a good old National Health Hospital with, the, with these rickety wheelchairs at four in the morning, and it was like freezing. It was so cold. I was just shaking. I didn't realize I was in shock, but, you know, they were pushing us down, and we were looking at each other, and we got us in these, in these beds, and they put the curtain around us, and he had a collapsed lung. He had things in and out the other side, in and outside of his leg. Um, you know, I had my head open and, you know. Um, but just looking into each other's eyes, just our eyes must have been like, I said, what the hell was that? He said, I don't know. It's like I never tried to kill anybody before. And I said, no, neither did I. It's like, you know. But, but what, you know, Obviously, we talked about it a lot, and the next day, George said, you know, I was lying there and I was thinking, I can't believe it, after everything that's happened to me, I'm gonna be murdered, I'm being murdered in my own home. And since I'm being murdered and I'm going to die, I better start uh, letting go of this life. And I better start doing what I've been practicing to do my whole life so that I can leave my body the way I want to. I was so defiant and so determined. Nothing was gonna stop him from leaving his body and, and having 
leaping as high as he could go. It was the millennium, and we were staying in Santa Barbara with some friends, and then this awful news came through. I said to Tiny, we have, we have to go. And so I called up and he said, do, do, do you, you know, should we come? And he said, where are you? <laughs> so, okay, so we got on a plane and came immediately. And um, it was very, you know, it was very powerful. I mean, they, they would walk us around where the various stages of the attack took place. When they picked him up and they put him on this stretcher and they're carrying him downstairs. And there were two people who just started work that weekend. And, so, and he, he's being carried out, stabbed, with eight stabbers. He looks over and he says, so what do you think of the job so far? <laughs> Which is a great kind of, very George. So Danny and, and Libby and, and, and George came up to this house. And he just was so distraught. I've never, ever had a time when there's so many tears have been shed of just total grief of no death. Just grief of what a horrible thing somebody could do to another person without actually killing them. He was very, very badly attacked and by the time he died, he didn't even have a single scar on him. I mean, he was like a he was like a yogi. He moved on from that physically and mentally, and didn't let it affect him. But it definitely took years off his life. You know, so if you're trying to fight cancer and then you're trying to stay alive for something like that, you know, it's got to it's got to take it out of you. You know. We went to Fiji to be take us to the island where there isn't anybody and then take us in a boat and drop us off at the cove where there isn't anyone on the beach where there isn't anyone. And then he'd disappear. It's like he's only with me. And then he would go off on his own, but he'd come out like dressed in banana leaves or something, you know, with like heliconias and things. He liked to, um, for him, I think that was just like building a, a fort out of bracken. I had experience which, um, speeds up the whole idea of, um, you know, if you have something happen to you physically, then, you know, people can go in hospital or have a, you know, something wrong with them and, um, you know, have a shock or something like that. And then you think, wow, yeah, I could uh, be dying now. Now, if I was dying now, what would I think? What would I miss? Would I, if I had to leave my body you know, in an hour's time, what is it that I would miss? And I think, well, I've got a son who needs a father, so I have to stick around for him as long as I can. But um, other than that, I can't think of much reason to be here.